Welcome back for a review of One Piece chapter 1039. This week, I won't waste any time on a play-by-play -play recap since the chapter was essentially focused on one potentially monumental event, the downfall of an Emperor of the Sea. Before getting started, let me quickly say welcome if you're new to the channel. I do weekly One Piece chapter reviews, theory videos, and discussions. So if you're interested, please consider subscribing. It really helps this channel grow, and I really appreciate your support. But now getting into the discussion, we first receive a brief update on Momonosuke still desperately struggling to pull back Onigashima and prevent its descent on the brightly illuminated flower capital. It seems he now hears Zunisha's voice calling, but hasn't yet identified the voice as belonging to the island-sized elephant now approaching in the waters offshore. It will be interesting to see if Zunisha's ultimate purpose in the last act of Wano is to catch Onigashima before it falls, or if Momo will manage the seemingly impossible on his own. In either case, we're still waiting for additional clues regarding the mysterious newly awakened devil fruit power which seemingly invited Zunisha's arrival, much to the surprise of the five elders. Aside from the first two panels, the rest of the chapter remained focused on Law and Kid's epic battle with Big Mom. At the end of last week's chapter, the two worst generation captains declared they would prevent the reigning emperor from rejoining the battle on the roof between Kaido and Luffy. It's clear at the start of the chapter that both Law and Kid are running low on stamina, so they quickly devise a last ditch effort strategy to put Big Mom down for the count. I really enjoyed the back and forth banter between Law and Kid this week, as neither wanted to take orders from the other despite the effectiveness of their teamwork. Most impressive was the one-two punch which seemingly brings an end to this battle, at least for the time being. Law first managed to pin Big Mom with his sword, then used its awakened powers to puncture a hole straight through Onigashima all the way down to the mainland, creating a massive crater. Kid then used his magnetic powers to create a railgun, delivering what very much appeared to be a finishing blow. Now, I don't need to tell you how monumental the implications of this scene potentially are, as this could mean the downfall of one of the four emperors, representing an apocal shift in the One Piece world. But before getting too far ahead of ourselves and celebrating the end of Big Mom's reign, let's back up and consider all the angles here. So first, I do believe this is the end of Law and Kid's battle against Big Mom and that they have indeed emerged victorious, which is in itself huge, and elevates both of them to become much more serious rivals to Luffy moving forward. As I've said in numerous past chapter reviews, I've been skeptical about Law and Kid defeating Big Mom, so I can't say I predicted this outcome at the start of the raid, but I'm also not entirely surprised. Over the past 20 chapters, the tone of the story suggested the tides were turning, and that we would indeed see the new generation rise and triumph over the old. Much of the dialogue in this week's chapter highlighted these same ideas. Big Mom asserts that the Emperors have reigned supreme in the New World for decades, while Law and Kid counter that the times they are a-changing. The supernovas delivered on their promise by preventing her from reaching the roof, but importantly, even Law understood that their attacks alone aren't powerful enough to keep her down for long. We already saw Big Mom recover several times at the expense of using up a portion of her lifespan. As a quick aside, we don't know if Big Mom's lifespan is fixed. Her devil fruit allows her to steal and transfer other people's lifespans, but it's not clear whether she can add years to her own life. I could imagine the soul devil fruit in awakened state having a vampiric effect, but nowhere has that been suggested thus far. So barring the possibility Lin Lin can regain the years she lost, it's notable just how far she was pushed by Long Kid and what this battle already cost her. I also think there's something fitting about Big Mom consuming her own life given her uncontrollable gluttonous hunger. It would almost be poetic justice if she put herself in an early grave by using her devil for power, not that I suspect that will happen anytime soon. But back to the main point of discussion, Law's plan was seemingly not only to knock out Big Mom, but to entirely remove her from the battlefield in order to prevent her recovery. He punctured a hole straight through to the mainland below, and it seems Kid's attack was intended to push her through. Perhaps unconscious, she won't be able to direct Prometheus or Hera to rescue her like last time, causing her to fall into the crater carved into the bedrock. In that sense, I do believe this is the end of Long Kid's battle with Big Mom, and that the worst generation can be declared the victors, but at the same time, I don't think this is the end of the line for Big Mom entirely. She may not recover fast enough to re-enter the battle, and her reputation may be damaged, but her story remains unfinished. She still has narrative ties to Elbaf and an unresolved grudge against the Straw Hat Pirates which first brought her to Wano. Law and Kid asserted that Big Mom's reign is at its end, but what does it really mean to depose an Emperor of the Sea? It's important here to remember that the title Emperor is only partially based on their strength. 
The emperors also each reign over vast territories and command a massive fighting force. Here, Law and Kid have managed to topple Big Mom, demonstrating the Emperor's hold on the New World is no longer uncontested. They are both rising to challenge her strength, but unless she's somehow arrested and imprisoned, or someone else like Blackbeard swept through Totland while Big Mom was preoccupied on Wano, I'm not convinced she will lose her Emperor status. After all, Kaido was defeated as a pirate seven times, and still rules Wano as the so-called King of Beasts. Simply put, in isolation, losing a fight shouldn't be enough to strip an emperor of their status. Not to downplay their accomplishment, but it's also important to remember the fight was 2 on 1, so individually Law and Kid are still outclassed by Big Mom, and their strategy depended on using gravity against her. Absent Onigashima's present altitude, which provides the opportunity to push unconscious Big Mom through to the mainland, their attacks alone would seemingly prove insufficient. All of which suggests that Law and Kid both have some room to grow before they truly achieve the same level of strength as the current Emperors. This victory also comes after a very long war of attrition, as Kid described in chapter 1038, a rain wearing down a mountain. Notably, Big Mom was also arrogant and dismissive of Law and Kid for most of their battle. She assumed victory, turned her back on her opponents, and chose not to evade or block Kid's final attack using the railgun. This fits with the notion that the Emperor's complacency and overconfidence is in part responsible for their undoing. The world government forces are en route, so I suppose it's possible Big Mom will be captured along with Kaido, but I personally believe this is rather unlikely, given that unlike Kaido, Big Mom has a clear exit strategy. While Kaido's crew have all been defeated, half of Big Mom's crew is still circling the island looking for a fight, and I can imagine they'll swoop in to rescue her and escort her to safety. I could even imagine her falling all the way through the crater to the yet-to-be-seen underground port just as her children arrive. Big Mom's reputation was already damaged by Luffy's incursion into her territory during the Whole Cake Island story arc, and this apparent loss to Law and Kid will only further diminish her standing, which doesn't necessarily imply she will cease being an emperor entirely, but could serve as motivation for her story moving forward. I still suspect she could serendipitously stumble upon Wano's Road Poneglyph before the Straw Hats get a chance to view it, giving her a constellation prize of sorts and also necessitating another encounter between the Straw Hat Pirates and the Charlotte family in the future, potentially on Elbath. And on that note, perhaps Big Mom will again set her sights on the Land of Giants in an effort to restore her now severely damaged reputation, and if Totland were to be ransacked or conquered, to begin rebuilding her empire. There are many ways her story could progress from this point, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on what this means for Big Mom. Do you think this is the end of her story, or will she live to fight another day? Again, I don't mean to diminish Law and Kid's accomplishment here. In fact, I'm very happy to see just how seriously they may rival Luffy in the future. But I just think it's important to keep things in perspective. Big Mom's defeat on Wano is less representative of her fall than it is the rise of the worst generation. And unlike the old and brittle, this new crop of pirates still have plenty of room to grow. Kaido wondered just how high Luffy's ceiling goes, and it's nice to know that sentiment extends to his fellow worst generation rivals, Law and Kid. If anything, coupled with Kaido's impending defeat, we may be seeing the entire power structure in the New World collapsing, fitting with other major events like the dissolution of the Seven Warlords decided at this year's reverie. We already saw that the death of a single Emperor, Whitebeard, and the rise of Marshal D. Teach precipitated two years of chaos around the world. Law and Luffy irreversibly broke the gears of power when they set this chain of events in motion on Punk Hazard, and there's no turning back. And it's important to remember, the worst generation aren't rising to replace the emperors as static rulers. In his letter to Toki, Odin suggested the crop of pirates who would arrive in the New World 20 years after his death are going to lead the charge in a war great enough to split the seas apart, and I suspect that statement is entirely free of hyperbole. Luffy, Law, and Kid are all going to be key players in these future events. But that doesn't necessarily mean Big Mom's role in the story has ended, especially considering just how much remains unresolved. As such, I believe she may be bruised but not broken, leaving Wano. The way the fight was written elevates Law and Kid, but it still took two of them working together, Big Mom underestimating them as a legitimate threat, and being pushed through a hole in the floor to prevent her recovery in order for them to claim victory. While I'm sure Morgans will have a field day reporting Big Mom's downfall, as is usually the case, the real story may be far less sensational than the inevitable headlines in the morning paper. One last point I want to touch on is what Law and Kid's victory could mean for the resolution of Luffy's battle against Kaido. If Law and Kid emerged victorious, then surely this would suggest Luffy will also soon claim a solo win against an Emperor of the Sea. 
it does seem things are headed in that direction, especially after Zoro and Sanji emerged victorious in their battles against King and Queen respectively. Yet personally, I still believe there's another twist coming. Toki's prophecy of Nine Shadows remains unfulfilled. Kaido's devil fruit has not yet been awakened as far as we're aware, and most importantly, his backstory hasn't been revealed. I'm going to discuss this topic at length in an upcoming video, so I won't go into too much detail here, but I believe Luffy may need some assistance. One last push to finally defeat Kaido and at last deliver Wano's new dawn. That's all for this week's chapter review, thank you for watching, if you like this video please leave a like, if you want to be notified when future videos are posted please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon it really helps this channel grow and I really appreciate your support, but most important make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comments.